Hey, I'm BB Miniatures, and welcome to my latest tutorial. Let's just get straight into it, and we're going to be going over the paints that are going to be used. The first part is going to be the Samurai Green from Chimera. Uh, next off with our flesh tones are going to be from Citadel. So nice Cadian flesh tone and Kislev flesh. Nice and easy to get. The third one here is we have a Carmine, which is a nice red from AK's third gen acrylics. And then um, we can either use a pastel yellow or I do like using that ice yellow from uh, Michael Plinsky's set from Chimera. And then you're just going to need some black. Right away, taking a look at the miniature, the nice thing about priming with that black from uh, Gaines Workshop gives a little bit of a sheen. And I've just highlighted some areas here which we want to be paying attention to. The nice thing is I've just held this under my painting lamp just to give us a little bit of an idea of the volumes that we'll be working with. And it helps you just to take a moment when you start, you know, figuring out the process, especially coming to a new model. And you kind of just want to see how the, you know, how the light reacts on it. Of course, you know, we're not going to paint completely true to it, but it does give you a very good template and a very good start, especially for those highlighted areas that we are looking at. The biggest key areas that we really want to be focusing on for this mount this model and how we're painting it is just going to be around the head, the shoulder, and then the arm section. Right now I'm just mixing up some of that samurai green and we're just going to put a nice easy base coat on here. Nothing too fancy. In hindsight, taking a look at this, if you wanted to speed this up, I think I should have actually taken my airbrush and just run some Tamiya flat white. Um, thin down with a little bit of X20A thinner, you know, not to reach like a pure, uh, a pure white, for instance, but to kind of give it a bit of a, you could call it a, a zenithal highlight if you wanted to. But the nice thing is, you know, working off a little bit of a lighter base coat will make this stage a little bit easier. Um, just a note on the skin itself, I wouldn't recommend doing this this uh, painting recipe purely for army painting. Um, this does get into a, a little bit of a higher resolution, but you can still take the same colors and I think you can substitute, a, you know, we can substitute a few techniques that we've used through here, mainly like, you know, using this section base coating with the airbrush and then maybe just putting some simple volumes with a little bit of Cadian flesh through the airbrush. And then, um, you know, through there, then you could use some various, you know, maybe going through some washes and then taking some of the highlighting stages that we do later in the video. If you're still, you know, you're keen on the, uh, the, the paint scheme itself. But um, for this, of course, I did paint the vampire and unfortunately the vampire um, filming of it was completely out of focus. I don't know what my camera was doing at the time and also my fault because I didn't even realize it until I brought it into the editing booth. So that's why I'm actually painting this little minion ghoul here to a, um, I guess like a higher standard. He's a lucky one, you know, a rank and file troop gets a, a little more, a higher treatment on the, the painting quality. But regardless, I think all the miniatures in the new set are just fantastic. E even like the lower rank people, which I normally never actually looked at too, you know, in too much detail, but it's really all right there. And all these miniatures are great in both ways, how you want to paint them. All right. So on the painting palette here, we're just going to start mixing in that um, samurai green with just a little bit of Cadian flesh. Now this first stage is more like, um, you know, it's a good little sketch stage because especially if you've never painted any of the volumes here, this is a good time to, you know, get to know the canvas and um, start filling in areas. I'm going to start off with our first, you know, our first base coats, our first highlights. So just with that samurai green, just with a little bit of Cadian flesh. And you want to water this. I water this around a one to one. And the biggest thing here is just taking a look and giving in all the highlight spots. This is your time to, you know, also make the most mistakes, you know, accidentally, uh, you know, if you miss the highlight here or, um, you know, maybe you have actually painted into the shadows. This is the time to do it because it'll give you good, a good rough uh, check on, you know, what's fitting and what's not. 
the uh the main part about here is going to be about the stroke itself and this is how you can kind of like warm up to it and painting skin this way with um, at least like a one-to-one -one mixture first off i'm using a very small brush so i went right away and i'm just painting with an artist opus double zero the nice thing about painting with a small brush of course it holds very little moisture in the brush so if you're used to using larger ones you might get a little bit of a different mark just because with you know a brush like a size one or even like a two after you rinse the brush it always has a little bit of extra moisture in there so that also dilutes the paint even more so since i'm painting with a double zero just be mindful that i have to dilute the paint a little bit more on the palette but if you wanted to do this with like a size one or a two you might want to just do a little bit less dilution just because um just from the moisture from your brush will probably dilute the paint a little bit more in the brush when you pick it up from the palette what I'm here and doing here is I'm pretty much just going after all the raised areas. It's always nice to take um, a little bit of a reference. So I do have a picture of the uh, the ghoul that I showed on the, the first part of the video. I just have that open on the desk just in case I ever, you know, want to refer back to it. You know, kind of take a look. Oh, where did the light hit? Where is it concentrating the most? And on this figure, the main parts of the highlight are going to be on the head that shoulder piece, the elbow, and then that wrist part of the arm. Now I'm going to be treating these all kind of like um, a bit spherical. So they're all kind of, you know, they're, they're pretty much joints. So, you know, a head is very much a spherical object. Um, the shoulder, since our shoulder is kind of on like a, a, you know, a ball and socket joint, we can kind of treat it as a very loose sphere. And then the elbow, again, another another round joint that is also connecting you know two parts of the arm the upper arm and the lower arm are pretty much like cylinders themselves and of course the wrist again another joint you know kind of treat it like a loose sphere so if you ever you know taking a look at any reference photos or reference drawings there's plenty of them online you can just you know take a picture or find a reference photo or a picture of a sphere and we kind of know that the, the light gathers in a circular pattern. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So I'm just going to be start to um, highlighting those areas more. Now, the nice thing is how we can get those highlights to kind of gather in those areas is going to be a lot to do with your brush direction. So by taking the brush and making, making sure that majority or almost all of your strokes are going towards the central point of the light so picking where the, uh, the the brightest or the highest point of the highlighted area is and you want to pull all your paint more to that direction the thigh that i'm painting here is actually you know the closest thing the closest generic shape of a thigh is going to be a cylinder so that's going to receive the most flattest and largest highlight so i'm going to be using a little combination of um, you know pulling the paint towards the front of the model towards the knee just because like light even though the top of the thigh it's really tucked in into them so you know the further uh, <laughs> the further it comes out towards the knee will be more light and the same thing with the head the head is going to be a big rounded object and for now for the first general stages you'll see me kind of picking through um you know the, the the larger details in the face but most of them I don't mind if paint goes in there the only ones I'll try to avoid at most is um, the temple area and then just below the cheekbone those are probably the two um, uh, the two larger areas that actually get a little more shading if you're getting paint within the you know the crevices around the the eyebrows and the facial stru structure right now that's perfectly fine um, because we're going to be gathering a lot of light close to the center of his head because again the head's very spherical and the head is the you know we want i'm mean, going to have the light projecting uh facing forward on his face so we'll only start to pick out those details a little bit later and on this stage here when i'm doing these first little highlights you know it's just a couple of um you know one to two layers at the most if you want to work very very softly you know 
You do a couple of layers, it's not so bad. Okay, so after our first mix we're done, we're going to put in a second one. So now we're just going to add a little more um, Cadian flesh into the mix. So this is getting closer to uh, one to one with a slight lean of of the uh, samurai green, but nothing drastic. If you want to go, if you push this a little bit further, that's perfectly fine. And if you can see um, how I'm gathering the light at the the top of the shoulder, you're really I'm just really watching my brush stroke direction. You know, pulling mostly upwards into that uh, the top of the the uh, musculature right there you can start to see actually even with you know just this first base you can kind of see where my highlights are going and um, where I'm kind of leaving more of the shadow or in this case the uh, pure uh, samurai green and even when you're um if this is your first time working in this way with these thinner marks, you have to really um, make a note and watch your charge. The charge is going to be the amount of paint that you have in your brush. And if you can see right now, there is like no excess paint on the outside. So it's not like I have a sleeve of paint. And when I'm touching down on the model, we're not getting giant blobs of paint onto there. I do, however, in this, in during this uh, painting process, there are a few times where I uh, blob out the paint by accident, and I will note it for you so you can kind of use as a visual cue of, you know, what not to do. Um, but the real secret for this to to keep your charge light is about you know loading your brush with very little amounts of paint. So when I'm dipping it into the palette, it's really just like a very small like nitpick you know you don't see there's not a lot of there's no paint that's really going up into the ferrule of the brush so that's where the uh, brush and the metal meet on that little on that the handle there and um but if you ever do any pick up any excess paint a common habit i have is i just wipe it on my thumb or you know give it a quick dab off on your you know your, your paper towel your kitchen towel that you're using this really makes sure that you don't overload the area. That's probably one of the most common problems when painting, especially in this manner, is we have to be quite delicate and we want very little amount of paint on the brush at any one time. You know, these miniatures are small. They don't need a lot of paint. So um, that will help us definitely getting a softer mark. And when you pair this up with a small brush like this double zero, we can get some very, very fine and very soft marks with our brush. The other part is, it's just going to be about feel, really. It's going to be about how soft and, and the brush pressure you put. The more, uh, the harder you push in the brush into the surface and having that, uh, in particular, having those bristles bend, that means we're going to be, you're going to be increasing the surface area that the brush touches down on the model and you're going to deposit more paint. So again, that's another way you can help uh, control the amount of paint that comes down at any one time. As you can see right there, all those brush strokes I'm pulling up and I'm pushing it, pulling it up and I'm, you know, depositing the pavement right where that, sorry, depositing the pigment. <laughs> Um, right closest to uh, along the wrist that's where the largest amount of highlight that I want to gather and just to give like a little bit of uh, you know volume and depth if you noticed um, it's the thumb and the pointer finger that get the most amount of highlight and I start to reduce the amount uh, on the subsequent fingers of like the middle the ring and the pinky finger does he have four fingers? I can't even remember. No, yeah, he's a humanoid hand. I don't know. But anyways, that kind of gives you, that kind of gives a little bit of an extra illusion of a little bit of depth. You know, the, the, the thumb and the forefinger are the ones that are closest to light and the other fingers are kind of, you know, halfly kind of um, overlapping too. So they wouldn't get as much light.
and I'm just working on the legs so you can see those horizontal um, brush strokes a little bit like NNM <laughs> you know they're right there actually good point is where I blob it out see that little extra part that I put on there what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna gently pull that that uh, that extra blob of paint down so it doesn't just like settle right there sorry for the ghoul's hand move it out of the way ghoul there we go and there I'm just starting to like gently spread it you know try not to uh, push deep into the paint when you're doing that you'll kind of I, I kind of like it kind of digs into it and kind of create a bit of a pit so it, in that instance you know I'm just trying to use a light stroke and trying to like pull it into the light as much as I can and here I go again um, this is like a second layer of this uh, of this mixture just going on top and the nice thing is with working with more transparency so again like it's around a rough like one to one and a half parts water um, the easiest way to actually measure this is I was mixing I've been mixing the paint with my primary brush now a lot of times I like to use a mixing brush but sometimes I either um, get too lazy get carried away but the fun thing is is actually if you're going to be using your finish your, your painting brush as your mixing brush the nice thing is your ratios will be a lot easier to manage in terms of water to paint you just got to make sure that after um, every like session when I do this I, I give the brush a really good wash and maybe just a, a light little run with um, some brush soap just so none of the paint ever dries in that ferrule and starts to um, ruin the brush so just keep that in mind but yeah you want to make the pick uh, the paint mixture on one to one and a half parts water to one part paint and going through a second pass when you start doing this um, you can even, you know, choke up on the area that you're painting. So it just gives you even more control, a little bit like a softer fade, even though you're just working with one value of paint. And as you can see that the majority of the, the, the highlight that I'm focusing is on the middle part of the face so really coming into the nose in the bridge uh, the top of the mouth um, its cheekbones got some big dimples <laughs> and uh, the brow especially because like the, the the brows are pretty nicely pronounced on these ghouls which is like again a treat as I was saying earlier like even the foot slogging troops have some excellent detail on these models now so you know, it wasn't, I'm so accustomed before where I would only ever more interested in, in painting the characters because of the, also because of the detail, not just, um, <laughs> you know, not just because like they're the unique heroes and all, but uh, most of the infantry, especially when I got into the game, wasn't at the like especially the plastics weren't at this detail you more needed like a pewter figure for that but um you know it's really come to realization now that even the uh, the plastic inventory look excellent and you know can can make even painting single single troops like this a lot of fun this is a really good example sorry for a little bit of out of focus but as you can see, like all my brush stroke direction was just going straight to the front of the head, even on top of the head right like that. And that just really helps with the blend. And that's also like a really good indication, you know, taking a look at you know, how my paint stroke looks. Look how the paint and the transparency looks across the model. Um, that's what we really want to, to mimic if you're following along that's what we're really looking for and uh, another thing to help you on this process is that you got to get comfortable with what each stage looks like you know it's not <laughs> it's not um draw a couple owls uh, <laughs> draw a couple of circles and then draw the fucking owl you know it, it takes a little bit of time to get there but 
you know, if you're paying attention and know where to look, you'll come through. So now this, this last mixture with the Cadian flesh is going to just be primarily Cadian flesh with just a little bit of um, the samurai green. The samurai green will still be, I'll still add little bits, little bits here and there into the flesh just to keep a little bit of the tone in there. But for the most part, this is just pure Cadian flesh. Like you can even just use Cadian flesh if you don't want to put a little stab in there or maybe you want to take these colors and convert it into more of a, an army um, an army painting scheme which is perfectly fine but again I'd like to focus um, especially when I was starting off this I really want to um, I pretty much always focused on the shoulder here it is uh, probably the largest area of highlight um, and second most important to the face the face is always first so um, I like to do that when I'm painting miniatures because, um, you know, you kind of want to test it out. Maybe not on the face the first time, <laughs> you know, uh, just because it demands, a, you know, there's a lot of detail in there and I really don't want to um, make mistakes in the face and have to relayer and, you know, we might lose the finish. But on the shoulder, there's more real estate. So there's more real estate for corrections and stuff like that. You can see again, always keeping that consistent of the brush direction, pulling it in. And another thing with skin you have to realize is that you can't, um, to make it look more realistic, don't have every single lump or like musculature living on its own. You know, um, to get, you know, to be painting more light volumes and there's no hard edges on skin i think that's what the tricky part is with people because you know um, especially for um, newer painters or you know an ev metal style painter you know they, they mostly focus into the edge highlighting but on skin there's not any hard edges so light volumes i find for me um, look much better and it's just primarily how i paint but the one thing you have to uh, an, a good rule of thumb is is when you want to factor in your light direction, don't be afraid to put a highlight right in a crevice if that, uh, or like, you know, a recess where maybe if you were to use a wash, it would sink in there. But don't be afraid to fill that with a highlight if it's right directly in line with it, in line with the, the light direction because if it's facing up and it can be seen by the highlight, it's not gonna be a shadow, it's gonna be a light. And when the uh, when light actually is facing directly, like, you know, right parallel, 90 degrees, right into that crevice, that inverted crevice, uh, that crevice kind of acts as an inverted highlight because it actually, uh, it's a lot of light rebounding from the left and the right side of the walls that funnel the light right down into the, the crevice. So, um, if you definitely want to hear more on that, um, I do have more videos on my Patreon where I go into the, the fundamentals of light volumes and doing, um, you know, a few more videos where I take a little more of a study and a breakdown into various miniatures to, you know, help you and, you know, there to help my patrons and fellow students to um, help, help them read models a little bit better. Um, reading sculpture and reading, you know, um, 3D surfaces so we can help illustrate the light better. But that's not to say that you can't learn a lot from observation. So, you know, keep being curious and keep painting. And most of all, it's like you just have to experiment and try. And you don't have to be, uh, you know, you can't be afraid to fail. And But in the end of the day, it's just paint. You know, you can always paint over it or you can always strip it. It's nothing permanent. And the more you do it, the more you try, just the better you get. And, um, you know, just with each painting you do, it's those little victories, I think, that, you know, motivate me to get better every time. Every time I do 
another painting, a, another subject, or, you know, whatever I really want to be working on, you know, if I get that 1% better than my last one, that is all I'm looking for. I'm not looking always look for like, giant leaps in my painting. I'm always looking for like the small little wins. And it, it, it's even a win if it just felt a little bit easier or, you know, you understood the, um, uh, the volume a little bit better. Like you learned to read it a little bit faster or anything. Always looking for them. Helps me keep me motivated, keeps me excited. And, uh, you know, keeps me so excited that when I'm done one, I'm just like, I can't wait for the next one. So. But yeah, going back to the face, you can start to see like just even more development as, uh, you know, the saturated the skin unfolds as like the layers progress. If you've kind of noticed with these layering is it's not, I'm leaving like a definitive space in between each layer. This is such a small area, but the thing in, and you're going to be overlapping a lot of these time, a, a lot of these layers on top of each other completely. But what's going to help you give that softer edges, so the edge, the transition between the shadow into the light is going to be a huge help with your brush direction. That's why I was, you know, a very big advocate of that. Just because of when you, um, when you pull in the one direction, where your brush stops is where the majority of the pigment will be deposited. So at the start of the brush stroke, it's going to be a lot more faded. So since we're pulling all the paint towards the center, we're going to be growing more pigmentation and a stronger uh, chroma at the uh, where our brush uh, ends. And where it starts, it's very, very soft and faded. You pair this up with multiple layers. As we're going through, we get a softer edge. Here's what I'm getting here is a little bit of a correction, a coarse correction. So I saw some areas on the skin that were just like too strong of a shadow, too strong green. So what I did, I reached back and I went to the previous layers and I just added a little bit more water into the mix. So instead of the one to one, this is closer to like three to one. So you're pretty much getting into a thick glaze. And what I'm doing here is I'm plugging those in either into the shadows to lift the shadow value a little bit higher, as well as I'm looking at the transition between our first layer and our third one that we did and acting like a bridge and trying to bridge that gap with this uh, the second layer into there. Just to give a little bit of correction when you're going on. In terms of, you know, step by step, you may have to do that step later. You may have to do that step sooner. It's kind of your judgment call. And when you want to feel, uh, when you think that is going to um, be a time to do it, you know, um, it's not exactly like how you got to follow this exact video in terms of, I got to do the bridge now and fill it out. You kind of have to look to see your own transitions. But if you're not entirely sure, I would just attempt and try it because one of the things you're going to do is when you try it, you're going to see what the effects are going to be. You're going to, you know, learn a little bit more um, with uh, how that reacts off your brush. And then um, you will uh, get better at finding the exact time to use it. Here I've taken, now I've taken a mixture of just pure samurai green and I've made a glaze out of it now. So this is like closer to six parts water to one part paint. And what I'm doing here is I am just adding a little bit of the shadow color back into the eye sockets just to give a little more definition. You saw me um, just gently run it uh, along um, some of the recesses of the face and um, you know cleaning up this transition here more towards the back of the head or anywhere that I see, maybe it's a little bit rougher and I'd like to smooth it out a little bit. I don't want the skin to be super smooth, if you notice, because you know, he's undead. He doesn't have the healthiest skin regime, so a little bit of that texture is fine. All right, so this is where we're gonna start to move into more of the actual highlights uh, of the skin, believe it or not. So. There's my little touch of samurai green 
which again, you don't really need, but I did it anyway, just to have a little bit of that tone in there. But if, um, if you don't feel like doing it, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. But this is where I start adding in, excuse me, I had the Kisla flesh into the mixture. So this is possibly like um, two parts Kisla and uh, one part Cadian with a little bit of the, uh, you know, a little bit of the um, Samurai Green in there. And this is where I'm going to start to paint in the highlights. And when it comes to the face, this is where we want to start picking off more of the real details on his face. Namely, like the, the brow, the nose, um, the cheekbones, and just like the raised areas, including um, his eyes are tiny. So he does, especially on the left eye or the left eye to what we're viewing, he's got, um, you know, his, his left eyes open up a little bit more. And there's actually the lower eyelid that we'll paint and uh, not to confuse that with the eyeballs. These eyeballs are tiny. <laughs> You can also see that my uh, some of my brush strokes are getting a little bit smaller and we'd be start using a um, little more uh, stippling involved in there as well, not just with, uh, you know, smoother strokes. And again, getting down to the center of the face. If you notice, I'm not like wrapping these highlights all the way around his mouth. Again, I want to try to focus the light more to the center of the face to really give that more rounded appearance in it. You also look at even if you're paying attention to how much little charge I have the crazy thing is is that especially on these higher highlighting points this is where you can be really soft and if you're still having if you're having still a little bit of um, issues with overloading your brush and blobbing it out at this stage in particular a really interesting fun little trick is that you can load your brush as you normally would but then I want you to pretend that you're about to do dry brushing with the tiny little
work already. You know, we're half an hour in. This is actually like maybe uh, 40, 40 minutes of my time painting. And, you know, it looks kind of, yeah, the skin's being developed. I think it looks, you know, it's coming along well, but it still looks kind of haggard and ragged. You know, there's not a lot of finish to it. So if you feel a little bit impatient, and sometimes I do, um, you know, I, I would actually you know, just fill in the mouth right now and, and do those details just to give yourself like a quick win, you know, and to see the project develop a little bit more. Sometimes it can be a little bit discouraging just to be working on one element for so long. And if you, if, if this is prone for you, it would always be a good idea to, you know, fill in an extra area. Maybe just do the mouth and then you can go back to the skin because you can see more of it develop. And then uh, later on, if you don't feel good, you're like, all right, let's just take my eyes a little bit of a break and I can just block in something else. Maybe block in the weapon or, or the fur or maybe that weird, I don't know what's jabbed in his, uh, his, his bicep, but yeah, you could... You could do that just to give yourself a little bit of a break if you feel a little bit worn out, um, you know, painting the skin. And uh, th those little things I, I do sometimes just to, you know, uh, just help in the process to keep you motivated, especially if you, again, like if you've been doing this for like painting the skin for like half an hour and you feel a little bit worn out, um, doing those little tricks like that will just you know, keep you going and keeping you excited for it as well. Last thing you want to do is abandon a project when you're like here and you're like, oh. And again, a little more correction if you can see me. I'm just dipping into our first mixture. And I just noticed a little bit of a, a transition. Now, as I'm making corrections down this line, see, like, and we're going a lot farther along, the paint mixture here, I will thin it out even more. So this correction is done with, like, a, a mixture three to one. So I make them softer. Just because, you know, we don't need as a, a root of a mark. At the beginning, you know, we're doing big areas and then as we start cutting down or s start developing further, we need softer and softer marks because we need less change happening at once. Speaking of change, I made a bit of a... I noticed when I was highlighting the shoulder, I was just kind of getting kind of carried away on autopilot and just highlighting towards the very, very top of the shoulder. But I found that, wait a minute, I said the shoulder was round and I wanted the, f the light to be more in the front. So I took just our, pretty much our base tone, made a glaze out of it. Like I said, three to four parts of uh, water to one part paint and just cut back on that part of the shoulder just to make the highlight rounder again you know, giving that more of a rounded light appearance onto there. And um, I was actually just doing that was quite pleasing. All right, now for this uh, second highlight. Now, I'm sorry that the camera is almost like my uh, my webcam that I use for the palette cam was a little, it's really hard to pick out ice yellow, <laughs> but I promise you there's ice yellow and kids left flex mixed into there together. It's around a 50, 50, you know, one part, uh, kids left one part ice yellow and going back. And now I can just pick out the, the pretty much like the, the second or almost like max highlights as I like to place it. And, um, I haven't been showing all the highlighting stages on the rest of the arm just because it's a lot of uh, repetition. Um, but in this stage here, I'm just going to show you the final stage highlights just to show you how small the areas that we're actually be covering. So I just covered the two brows, the side, uh, the, the cheekbones there, uh, the top of the lip, the left and the right side. 
You notice like hit the middle of his lip kind of curves down a little bit and his nose might get in a little bit of the way. So I kind of just give a little pause there. Uh, doing that max highlight right in the side of the eye there and um, on the lower eyelid too, just to help it punch out a little bit more. And the top curvature of the nose. And just that little uh, detail in between his, uh, his brows. And uh, since this, since his, uh, his head, or his eyes cocked up a little bit, kind of like the rock, you know, just to illustrate a few of the folds onto there. It's kind of funny. But again, keeping it nice and small, keep it nice and tight, watch your charge. And, um, you know, I don't think, uh, you can go too far. We've pretty much been, uh, you know, just giving those highlights to these areas now. The nice thing is when we're near the end stages of these max highlights, it's my favorite parts of the painting when you're doing here. And they also go by faster just because there's a lot less area to paint. And you're also, since you've spent a little bit of time in this area, you've gotten to know the shapes really well. And, um, you know, it's just easy to pop out. Here's just a little area in the elbow section. You can just see how small these highlights are. Just little, little areas right there, all gathered around that central elbow. So if you kind of see how that, um, the, the direction of these, uh, of the highlights are all um, pointed into the center there. And then just a little bit of light on the wrist. I believe I just hit the two fingers. I don't run a whole highlight across the entire uh, across the entire digits. I just highlight the couple of ridges on his knuckles. That's it. You know, if we made the highlight run all along his entire finger, that actually makes the highlight very large. And um, that's not what I want to be doing. I want to keep those highlights small. And of course, uh, the, the one on his uh, his thigh leading again leaning towards the front of the of the knee in that direction I should say and then again after I do the max highlights this is optional if you need it to but I just grab my max shadow which in this case is just the samurai green. And I very carefully just cut back on any areas and bring a little bit of shadow. So in those little folds of his skin and under his eye. All right, been patient enough. Let's get that, that, uh, that little bit of red and we're gonna make another glaze with it. And we're going to start to tint the skin in the areas red. Now, there's no hard rule on where you're going to place this red. You could be, you can make up any pattern you want. But for this one, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be putting the red in mostly where uh, either joints as well as areas that would um, around sensory organs. So like even just on like kind of basing it a little bit off anatomy, but you know, he's a ghoul. So, um, you got total free reign liberty here. So around the ears, I'm going to be putting it around the mouth, the nose. Um, there's going to be a little more redness around, um, where those knife or bone things are stabbed in, uh, his, uh, his arm is a bicep and um, around the hands and knuckles areas but the one thing i really want to keep away from the majority of it is trying to smother all of the highlights now on the face it's really tricky because it's really really small so i don't mind if it just goes over a little bit but i don't want to like just wash the entire model you know out of there i want to be a little more selective so Again, I've just chosen to, to go around the, the mouth 
and the nose and the ears and I'll probably get the back of the head too but I want to leave a lot of I want to leave more of the flesh in there as well because you know I want all these colors to, to play together the big the big thing about this glazing area again it's going to be about the charge do not overload your brush we do not want to be having major pools of this paint anywhere on the model I think the most amount of pooling as ever is going to be on there is going to when it filled in his ear socket and I think a little bit gets into his like nose but this paint mixture this glaze mixture is like at least six parts water to one part paint six to eight if you're not entirely sure thin it out even more there's nothing wrong um, with going too thin and it hardly making any mark at all that's better than going too heavy because you can always increase uh you know always add a little bit more paint into the, the glaze mixture and and do more layers just even from like the first pass of my glaze here we can you know you can start to see on how um how light how gentle it actually um stains the area and that's good you know i was quite happy with that um the first pass through i was like all right i got the mixture correct <laughs> and um and it continue forward if you're not entirely sure again just do it on one small area and let it dry completely never I, I like to say this a lot to my students never judge paint when it's wet doesn't matter if you're glazing doesn't matter if you're layering stippling whatever uh, wet paint doesn't give you any information until uh what's gonna look like until it's dried right not entirely, but you get the idea. We shouldn't be making judgment calls. I'm just going to say that you shouldn't be making like final judgment calls when the paint is wet. And uh, here it is on the knuckles. So again, I've left the main highlight. So our primary highlight along the wrist, the larger one, I'm going to leave that one alone. I don't want to stain it, but I do want to get it. Um, do want to get it around it pretty much and on the knuckles there. So yeah, pretty much like joints and areas like that. I did that a uh, very similar thing I did with the vampire. I did that on the joints as well as the second half. The upper parts of the wings were also in this in the same in the same red glazed in this fashion. I think it looks really cool. It gives it a lot of interesting. Uh, gives the character or gives the skin more character to look at. All right, so for the face touch-ups, I didn't get the best camera views on here. What I'm doing here right now is I am just filling in the eyes with black. Now, I tell you the truth, I didn't actually finish um, the eyes yet. I couldn't actually decide what I wanted to paint the eyes, like what colors I wanted to do it. I just left it uh, as is or the last time you saw it on the Instagram post. And on this video is I just left it with a white dot in the middle. But um, going back to the skin though, remember how I said we want to try to avoid the glazes on our max lights? Well, on that face is so tiny. So I'm just going back with our brightest highlight of the skin that we created. So that's again with that ice yellow and Kislev flesh. And all I'm doing here is just um, re-dotting the highlights back on top. And again, I'll make this mixture very, very thin. So this is like you know um two almost three to one uh two to three one parts uh water to paint and just going over on the top and i'm just trying to leave a little bit of gap in there and you know and just to bring those lights back into there now for the mouth um i'm just filling the entire mouth with uh, Gaines workshops rhinox hide and then i'm taking the exact same red that we used on the ak Oh, I'm having a brain fart. Can you remember the paint name? But you should see it on the paint list. <laughs> I'm using that not as a glaze, but I'm just taking like you know, uh, just pure, uh, pure red, and you uh, putting it on the gums. So that's where like the the strongest red of of this uh, of this ghoul is gonna be. 
maybe looking back, maybe I'll paint the eyes kind of like, I don't know, a pistachio yellow green. I don't know, maybe that or maybe red. <laughs> and the teeth, all I did was I just took um, Kislev flesh and added it into Rhinox hide to get myself a highlight for the teeth. Nothing, nothing too fancy. I honestly, I just didn't want to like reach for other bottles. I'd rather just make it, <laughs> make it on the palette on there. And uh, nothing wrong with reaching for another bottle, but I mean, helps you harmonize the paint a little bit more. And it's less work. I don't have to shake up a new bottle, put it on the palette, and just to do a few dots. I already have the paint on the palette. I'll just make it. And it's so small anyway, you know. Not gonna tell too much. And pretty much that is that. Um, thanks again for joining me. I hope you really enjoyed the skin painting process of this ghoul, which should have been the <laughs> the vampire. But um, I really hope that uh, you guys got to learn something in there and enjoyed uh, the process. If you're really interested in uh, this tutorial and other ones, I do offer, I do have a Patreon where my uh, members can subscribe as well as gain access to over a hundred hours of tutorials and over oh, it's almost like 50, 60 tutorials over it's quite an awesome collection so you can see me paint everything from other age of sigmar uh, models like the empire or gloom spike gits to um you know uh, space marines white scars 30k 40k and uh even just starting out some more legions imperialis but um, I'm just going to leave you at that. Thanks again for joining me, and we'll see you in the next one. Happy painting.